Welcome to Terry's Kitchen, where we talk food, faith, and family. Today we are making homemade grape nut ice cream. This is a, certainly a favorite for Shenandoah County and other areas, but before we get started, I'd like to read today's uh, devotion out of the Message Bible, and it's Psalm 103, so basically verse 1 through 5. O my soul, bless God. From my head to toe, I'll bless his holy name. O my soul, bless God. Don't forget a single blessing. He forgives your sins, everyone. He heals your diseases, everyone. He redeems you from hell, saves your life. He crowns you with love and mercy, a paradise crown. He wraps you in goodness, beauty eternal. He renews your youth. You're always young in his presence. Thank you, Lord, and thank you for the blessings that you have bestowed upon us and everybody that's watching this video. Thank you, Lord. All right, thank you for letting me read that. I'm going to wash my hands and we'll get started. homemade grape nut ice cream and those that have had are like I said are from the valley here this is kind of a, an ice cream that is everybody if you go to picnics if you go to yard parties grape nut ice cream and I want to I give a shout out to our New York um, not um, blood family but their family Samantha so Samantha is our dear friend Peg's granddaughter and so we, she was down one summer years ago and we said we were going to make grape nut ice cream. So a lot of times that we share grape nut ice cream with those that, you know, up north or way down south, they're like, ooh, what is this? But recently Samantha had said um, on, from one of my videos, she said, Terry, why don't you give us New Yorkers uh, share your grape nut ice cream? So Samantha, this is for you. Okay, so we're having a, a picnic later today, and with every picnic in the summertime, we try to do grape nut ice cream. And I always kind of think of the memories start pouring in when um, I'm doing these videos. And you know how much I love family. And so if you get me teary-eyed through this, it's because of all those wonderful memories rushing through. So with grape nut ice cream, so let me tell you what I first done, and this is the first time I've measured out anything, so uh, the measurements I, I wanted to, to share with you, so, and I've put this together, I've done this recipe probably all of our married life, which is coming up on 34 years, and I tried to tweak it a couple times, and everybody says, please don't, <laughs> we want the old grape nut ice cream, so here it is, and and how I got this particular recipe, um, I, I forget so long ago, because it's a little different than when um, my grandmother used to make it. So what I have here soaking are grape nuts. So if you're familiar with grape nuts, they are little, little chunks of hard cereal. And if you would eat that right out of this bowl, it can be very hard on your teeth. So what you want to do, I have three cups of the grape nuts grape nuts soaking and I added to that one can of evaporated milk and then two cups of half and half and so I just put it in there soaked it probably maybe 20-25 minutes and because you kind of want that cereal to get a little um, more it's not so hard so what I have here that I've already prepared I took a box vanilla pudding. So this is the cook pudding. So, and I put four egg yolks in and the three cups of milk. Because my grandmother, when she would make the grape nut ice cream, she always made it with a custard. And she put junkets in there. And I have never, I haven't used junkets. I think maybe I tried it once or twice. And, but this is kind of my version of making that custard um, to make that richness of the ice cream. So with that, so I've cooked it, and you see that it's it's gotten um, um, hard. 
not hard, but, um, you know, thick. So I'm going to pour that in to my soaked grape nuts. So again, that's three cups of grape nut cereal, two cups of half and half, and one can of evaporated milk. And then I mix the pudding with three cups of the milk and four egg yolks. So let me go ahead and stir that in. Because what you want to do is build on a custard. And the, the, the boxed ice cream mixes are fine, but I, I kind of like to do things cooking uh, kind of like my grandmother and, and other families do. So to that, I'm going to add, again, I have never measured, so we're going to see how much sugar I need. So normally, I at least start out with three cups of sugar. Because again, we like it sweet. And then I'm going to add some, so let me get the three cups in. And if that's too much sugar, later on we'll find out. And next time I'll know it's less sugar. But I'll let you know after we freeze it here. So I also have one, one tablespoon of vanilla. and I, Well, one and a half tablespoons of vanilla. I like that vanilla taste in the ice cream, so I'm going to pour that in. So now, I had poured in here six cups of whole milk. So I don't know that we're going to need that much because I know kind of what it's going to look like when I, so I'm going to pour probably half of that in. So three cups of milk. Oh, maybe a little bit more. There we go. Because what I'm doing is I want to be able, this is a, a four quart um, electric ice um, mixer, ice cream canister. I don't know what that is, but I'm, when I tell you, as we, um, in doing this years ago, growing up, they had the hand cranked ice cream freezers. And I believe they were called White Mountain ice cream freezers. Well, years ago, as young kids, so I remember the location that Grandma Cop, um, so she would make her custard and any kind of, we have big gatherings. So, and they had a dairy farm. So they had all that good cream and, and those fresh eggs. And, and so Grandma would make the custard and the canister, I mean, I don't, I don't know how big they were, but the ice cream freezer it had a big canister. So she would go out off the side porch. She had like a little patio. And um, that's where all the kids got a chance to crank that ice cream freezer. Well, if those that, that are older will remember when you hand cranked that ice cream, the longer you cranked, the harder that ice cream got, but it took forever. So us kids would give it uh, a crank until we got tired to our arms hurt and then bring it on to the next cousins, you know, Lisa and Philip and um, and, and Susan and, and Jr. was young at that, that time and may not have been, been uh, born at that time, but Sherry and I, we would crank this ice cream. And so when we thought you couldn't crank any longer, Grandma Cop would come out, so no, we're going to take a little bit off the top. So she took a little bit off the top and she said, it's not hard enough, so crank we go some more until you could barely move that. Well, that was the best ice cream, and you could, you could cover that, you could take that into a picnic, and it would stay firm for a long time if you iced it down. Grandma, I remember Grandma covering that ice and ice it down, and then put like a heavy rug or a heavy, um, uh, something heavy over it to, to keep that coldness in. And just the best ice cream. So. There's variations that you could use with this as you have your basic custard. Um, my father, um, and it's actually uh, Father's Day today that I'm making the, the grape nut ice cream. And so that's also brought memories. Dad's favorite ice cream was pineapple. So you could use this vanilla base with crushed pineapple. That's the only, you just leave out the grape nuts and add crushed pineapple. I've made homemade peach, homemade strawberry, um, I've done banana, I've done blueberry, I've done black raspberry. Um, but you know, something I've never done is chocolate. Not sure why. It's always our, our go-to is the grape nut or the pineapple or one of the other fruits. But 
you know, just again, the memories that just flooded back, but I'll share this, this memory. So when Ron and I first got married, and I was a stickler, you know, a White Mountain ice cream freezer. So Ron was going to give me an ice cream, free, ice cream freezer for, uh, you know, a birthday or a wedding anniversary or something. And he said, do you want electric? I said, no, indeed, we're not going to have an electric. The only type of ice cream freezer we're going to have is a cranked White Mountain um, ice cream freezer. So he said, are you sure? He said, they make them in electric. And I said, nope, not going to do it. Well, bless his heart, he got me a White Mountain hand cranked ice cream freezer, but you know what? We didn't have those flock of young kids around to help crank. So, as you can tell, I have an electric ice cream maker and the White Mountain, uh, I'm not sure what happened through the years where that went, but um, just some great memories and, and thank you for letting me go down memory lane with that. And I know those that um, are watching and are familiar with the old-fashioned uh, ice cream crank uh, makers and cooking that custard, you know, some of those memories will come back, um, hopefully, as you're watching this video. So, so I'm going to taste to see kind of where if we need more sugar, if I need more vanilla, and, or see if I got this combination right. Good vanilla, plenty of sugar, but I'm going to add a little bit more milk. So we're about four cups of milk. So I think we are good. So if you can see, we've got kind of a creamy custard. If you want to make this in advance, because usually when you're having a picnic, I don't know if you're like me, we those last minute things, it kind of gets kind of busy. I'm going to as I pour this in here, put this here to catch up any, any bad stuff. So again, this is a four quart um, electric ice maker and this is the, the canister. You've got your dasher here. So I'm gonna put that in. Make sure all my sugar's mixed up in there. And then I'm gonna pour this in here. Hopefully successfully without, um, but what I was saying, if you wanted to make your custard up in advance, you could do that. Aha, that's perfect. Perfect, that's right in there. So you, what you would do, you would just make your custard, put a lid on it, stick it in the refrigerator, and that way you'll be ready when it's time if you want to, after everybody gets there and you've had your, your lunch or your dinner, then you can just pull this out of the refrigerator and then you're ready to go to go help and uh, help freeze it. Sometimes chilling that down will decrease the, um, the time that it needs in the electric um, ice cream maker. So I had a little spillage here, but that's okay. We'll clean it up and be ready to go. So it's for the, the camera's sake. So my, my liquid's to about here. And years ago, with the hand crank, when it expanded, you could pull some of that off, and you could do that now, um, but I usually don't, um, and, and I'll tell you why once um, we get it going into the, to the mixer here. Okay, so you're going to put your lid on, and then I'm going to take it over here and show you how I kind of build the ice and the rock salt. So, I am putting my, um, the canister into the, the um, holder here. And what I'm going to do before I add the ice and the, the rock salt, I'm going to go ahead and fasten this. And as I go, it's already going to start tur uh, turning with the motor here. Wrong way. Always takes me a moment to get that figured out here. And actually, since, you know, our dear sweet son-in-law has come onto the scene, he usually is my fellow that, that watches my ice cream. But he did not want to be on camera today, so I'm having to do it, but that's okay. I'll get him the next time. But yeah, bless his heart ever since, so if we go to the beach or anywhere, he's my ice cream man. So, all right, so I've got this hooked up. And I'm going to go ahead and turn it on. Well, let me let me put the ice in there because otherwise you won't be able to hear me. 
So what you're going to do is you're going to add ice. So about... maybe a four thirty, about a half of that and I'm going to start adding my, my rock salt. Now to me the, the secret of, of freezing and, that, and your ice cream good is to really put some rock salt to it and um, I remember my grandmother um, adding, is there enough rock salt? Is there enough? enough rock? But the ice cream, uh, we call it rock salt, is, is what you want to do that's going to help melt that ice and really make it cold um, I don't know the scientific reason, but that's how I determine it. And usually with a new container, I'm going to have to open it up a little bit more and pour that in. So what you want to have a layer of rock salt. And normally I do this outside because I don't want to mess up my, with the rock salt if any of it comes out. So what you did, I did, is just put a layer of salt around. And you'll see when you cover your ice, then I'm going to add some more ice to it. Top of that. Then I'm going to add a little bit more of the rock salt. And I'm going to turn it on. And what we're going to do is we're going to keep building on that ice because the ice will melt. And so you keep adding some ice, and if you need to add some more rock salt, just do so. And I always pull the rock salt off um, on top of that lid. So then I'm going to big chunk of ice here to break that up in a minute. bring it as long as, as it's not interfering. Um, it'll start coming down with the, the, the rock salt and I'm just going to tap it off with a little bit more salt. So basically I did three layers of salt to get us started. So I'm going to turn it on here and what you'll need to do is just keep tabs. Um, so if you do this outside, um, just keep tabs because that ice will um, go down and you need to keep that ice above, um, uh, close to that lid um, as you're uh, freezing it. So let me get started with that. All right, and we'll be back and show you uh, what it looks like as it's finished. Okay, the ice cream has slowed down. It has been uh, freezing, oh, so 30, so for about 50 minutes it's been running and so I'm gonna let you hear this is what it sounded like and I knew that it was it was al al almost finished uh, yeah it's yeah it had stopped and it it's already it's done um, that where the electric mixer so I'm just gonna unplug that I'm gonna take this off Now, because we have all that salt, we want to make sure that we get that salt off that lid and around it. Okay. Then I'm going to pull it up out of this water. So every ice cream freezer is going to be different. And so you're just going to have to gauge. So your ice cream maker will actually start going like slow and then it'll just stop. So you know the electric part, it's done. You're not going to get it to go any further. The thing about the old fashioned crank, this is where my grandmother, when it got to this point, that like this, she would go take a dish, pour it, that off, and that's where she would let the kids. So kind of all the kids that would be around there of my cousins, you would have Sherry and myself, Philip, uh, Lisa, Everett Lee, we would have Bradley and Wade. 
Vicki and JR, I'm not sure we're on the scene yet, um, but you would also have Susan there. So all my cousins would be gathered around and Grandma would take this bowl and she would let us all try it. So, and then she would put the lid back on. She didn't pull the dasher up, but she would take a little bit off the top, put the lid back on, and back we cranked some more. So this is the difference of electric um, um, maker versus the old crank, because this is about, for me, this is about the thickness that I could have here. So I'm gonna pull the dasher, and those, the dasher, once that dasher was pulled, we were all on the scene as well. We figured we put that hard work in, we were gonna have a sample of that dasher. So this way, we kind of, I don't know if some of the others, but it seemed like we all fought over the dasher. And we would kind of, uh, one kid would, would lick one side and the other kid would lick a, another side or we took a spoon, it depends if we, um, oh, just, just fun. So, but just take this here and all those drippings come off there, that dasher will be Ron's here shortly. So, but what I've got, my container, I just cleaned my container back and I'm gonna wrap this up and I'm gonna just let this fall into the, my bowl because I'm actually gonna free, put it back in the freezer, the actual freezer, and to let it get a little firmer until we're ready to eat it. Now, my brother, Leslie, and his wife, Kelly, they kinda like it thin like this, but I like it more of a, a firm, a little firmer, so. Got all that wonderful stuff here. And then we're gonna bring Ron around and we're gonna have a taste to see how we did as far as sugar and all that. But I definitely wanna put a shout out to all the fathers this day. Um, definitely want to recognize Ron. He's such a good dad to our kids, Catherine and Chris, and just truly blessed. Um, you know, dad who's passed on, it's been about 16 years. and and Ron's dad, Michael, um, lands as far as how many years that has been. It's been a while, so, but really blessed with great, great fathers and those that, that may not have actual kids but are a father to so many, just wanna uh, put a shout out and blessings to them. All right, Ron, you about ready for a taste? I am. You have that side, here's the spoon. You don't get the whole thing, I need to try it, I'm the cook. <laughs> There's your spoon. So let's sample this. She's so bossy. You I am bossy. Yes. Oh my. Mm -hmm. So, taste it in the ice cream. So, very good. So, so I hope you all would consider making this. Ron's going for the dasher. <laughs> and um, that you would, you know, Homemade ice cream is very easy when you think of it. Just a time putting it in. Uh, again, the, about 50 minutes with the ice cream freezer. And if you want to get that old fashioned White Mountain out and crank, you know, wonderful memories of us kids. Who would have thought years ago that we would have such fond memories as we were out there using our, our, our muscles cranking. So again, happy Father's Day to all those fathers and blessings. One also up oh, before, if you wanna share this video or you like our videos, please consider sharing them. We do appreciate you coming into our home virtually and blessings.